Everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at String Safari. Uh, String Safari is a game from IDW and Pandasaurus Games for three to five players in which you are trying to satisfy research conditions by encircling specific types of animals or specific quality uh, containing animals in order to score points. And you might also have some bonus objectives in there. Uh, the idea being that you have this movable piece of string that you can use to lasso these into different groupings. Uh, so real quick, we'll take a look at what you get inside of this box. We'll see how the game plays and we'll come back at the end and get my opinion on String Safari. So here you can see String Safari set up for a four player game. Uh, the setup doesn't change a whole lot dependent on the number of players. You just have a different number of these little research markers that you'd get throughout the game. Uh, what we're looking at is a general playing field as denoted by this purple string. Uh, you can make this into any shape you want. At the beginning they suggest that you make it basically stretched out for the whole size of the string. So that's what it is. Uh, in the center of the string here, we have a randomized setup. Uh, there are land tiles, they say land on the back, uh, and I'm gonna try and reach over to the camera here, but they have a special scoring thing on them. So this one says all plus two. Basically, uh, you add two to your score if you encircle this in your area. Uh, rocky areas have no bonus on them. So rocky area, you may have to include a rocky area for your, your research this round, but it's not going to help you. Or grasslands, uh, it says that you get plus two for each one of your animals that is herbivorous or herbivorous. Uh, so each of these land tiles has a different bonus scoring thing on it, and one of them even allows you to play one of your markers onto it uh, in order to count it for the end of the game. But Irrelevant there. Um, the other tiles that are out here are animal tiles. So you'll see we have some green and some orange, some yellow, blue, and purple. Uh, these animal tiles are all different types of animals. So this one here is a gazelle. Uh, on this gazelle, you might be able to see, there are several markings. For one, it's kind of got a nocturnal or late evening symbol here first. Uh, after that, it's got a leaf to indicate it's herbivorous, which would go along with this grasslands tile here. Uh, it has a little hooved uh, impression here to indicate that it is a hooved animal. Uh, and then on the far right hand side, it has a star with a one in it, which, which means he's worth one victory point at the end of the game. Each of the different types of animals here of different colors has a grouping of some type. So it looks like all of these green ones that have the hooves on them are hooved animals. All of the red ones here are primates or some type of monkey. Uh, the both the blue and the purple are pawed animals. Uh, I think one of them is kind of more cats and the other one is more dog-like animals. And then the yellow ones are special animals that don't fit into any of those classifications, like the porcupine or the Somali giraffe or an African elephant. Different types of animals. Uh, slight misspeak earlier, this is not plus two or plus two for every herbivore, it's plus two uh, if you have at least one herbivore in your, in your area. Now, these research tiles out here are going to be what you're going to use in order to score points during your turn. And each round you'll have one of these cards that you've drafted at the end of your previous turn that you'll be playing for the new turn. So for example, let's take a look at some of these. This one right here. Uh, is going to be research time, or it's times three for each night animal you have. So you're gonna look for animals that have this little crescent moon on them, try to circle them and it will get three points for each one that you circle when you do your turn. Uh, you could have the purple paws, which purple paws are dog type animals. And so this one is three points for each dog that you circle or each purple animal with the purple paw. It could be for everything you circle, you get one. Now, some of these have special statuses on them. This one, for example, says that you must touch the green string, which you're using to circle your animals, to the purple string, the outside string of the match, or else you don't count. Uh, likewise, the research one I showed earlier shows that you must encircle a rocky area, it's down here at the bottom right hand corner, uh, for your research to count. And then we have a couple other ones here. This one is for the green pawed animals, two points per. Uh, and this one here is for herbivorous animals, three points per. So you'll see there's a wide range of different ways to score, different types of tiles. 
uh, and also different numbers of points you get for encircling those animals. Now the first round of the game, you simply draw an animal from this face down pile, and you would choose a research tile to have in your thing. So maybe this player likes uh, the nighttime one. Let's just say they like that one. And so this is their combination for their first turn. On your turn, from that point on, everyone will draft these and the research pile will replenish. On your turn, the first thing you're always going to do is you're going to play out your animal to the board. So they actually drew a nighttime anim time animal, very convenient. They would place it on the board, uh, and then when it's on, once it's on the board, it has to stay at least one string length or finger length is a better way to do it, away from all of the other tiles. Once they've done that, they're looking to find as many nighttime animals as they can in order to score their points. So they're going to take their string and they're going to play it around as many animals that match that category as they can. Let's say they do this. Uh, they might see if they can try and stretch this over to here, but it looks like it's kind of iffy. So let's just go back like this and say they encircle those four tiles. Now, this isn't actually allowed with this tile, so we'll go to a different example because it says they must encircle a rocky area. However, this would have been a great spot because these three animals right here are all nighttime. That would have been nine points, plus at least one of them is an herbivore, so they would have gotten 11 points for this turn. Very unfortunate for them that there's no rocky area. So they can see there's a rocky area over here, but they're likely only able to encircle one nighttime animal. Again, over here, a rocky area, but no nighttime animals around. Perhaps they chose a wrong, the wrong card to start out with, but nonetheless, maybe they circle over here. They have one nighttime animal, they get three points. And let's say that this is the green player, they would score their three points on the board, and they would keep this research tile face down by the rest of their things. Now, after they've done this, they're going to place a cube out onto one of these tiles, not the land tile, unless it's the footprints area, but onto one of the other tiles they've circled. It does not need to be one they scored. These tiles, as I pointed out earlier, have victory point values on them. For example, the fox is worth two, and the chimpanzee is also worth two. However, they would want to take into consideration what each other player is looking to encircle, because anything that has a marker on it does not count for scoring a research tile. So if they see that somebody else might have chimpanzees or monkeys that they need to circle, they might place it on the monkey in order to prevent that from being done on future turns. After they're done, they would remove the string, draw a new research tile and a new animal tile, and prepare for their next turn. Now the next player would take their turn doing the same thing. They would play out their animal tile that they started the game with. They would be trying to encircle for their own research tile. Perhaps they had, you know, cat paws or whatever it might be. This is dogs actually. Uh, but whatever tile they happen to have drawn earlier uh, and get points, as many points as possible for it during the game. And you'll do this in turn order until all of the research markers you have are gone. So in a four player game, you have five research markers, which is five rounds. On uh, after that fifth round, the game will end. The way you're going to score points is that you get all of the points that you scored in game by completing these research tiles. You're also going to get all of the points that are at the bottom right hand corner of a research tile. So you'll have five research tiles. Each one of them will have points printed on them. So this one's worth three simply for drafting the tile. Uh, so, or a card, whatever you want to call it. But all of the points that you accumulate, so this one was worth one, this one's worth three, you'll add all of those up. And you'll also add up all of the points on all of the animals on which you've placed your research markers. So some of them are worth two, three, or one. You add all of those points together and whoever has the most points at the end of the game will be the winner. And there you have it. That is String Safari from IDW and Pandasaurus Games. Um, so there's nothing wrong with this game. Let's, let's start that off right away. This is a fine game. Uh, it really is. Uh, I think that the concept is, is somewhat interesting that you're trying to satisfy these research conditions. You're trying to group these animals and there's some bonus tiles out on the field that you can utilize as well. Uh, the problem is that it just didn't catch me in any way, shape, or form. Um, that may be because of my, my, you know, preference for games just doesn't fall within this category. Uh, but, you know, I, I spent a lot of the game just looking forward to see what the other players had in terms of their research tiles uh, and make sure that I'm not creating groupings of animals that are good for them. This is obviously a, a relatively obvious strategy uh, and one of the main ones as far as moving forward because you don't know what you're going to draw as your next research tile. So the best you can do is try and limit what your opponents are going to get. Um, the, the challenge would be in, in figuring out the spacing so that if you do need to use that tile in the future, uh, you might be able to loop it in. Uh, but knowing the kind of restrictions of that rope is obviously important. So spatial reasoning is going to be very helpful in this game. Uh, overall, it doesn't have that much depth to it, right? It's just place your tile, 
go ahead and encircle something, try and fill your, fulfill your research condition as best as possible, uh, and when you're done, score your points. Uh, and at the end of it all, you score points based on what you've got. So, uh, overall, very, very basic, uh, very, very easy to learn, easy to teach, and if you're looking for a string game, this might be a good introduction. But overall, just one that doesn't catch me. Uh, so if it sounds interesting to you, and it very well may, go ahead and check it out. That is String Safari from IDW and Pandasaurus. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.